Hello and welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 13. My name's Andy and we're in the middle of talking about traits and generics. Um, so this is the slide we got to, but let's just jump back and remind ourselves what we were doing. So what we were doing was we were making a generic function, which is a function that uh, takes a, a type parameter. So basically a function that is different depending on what type you want to use it with. So we made this add values function, which takes in this type parameter t, which basically says the types of the arguments and the return value. And we we're basically allowing ourselves to add up two things of any type um, by calling my add. So where does my add come from? Well, my add is defined um, in the my add trait. So by saying this where t is my add, we're saying we're allowed to call a method my add on this because this is a t and t implements the my add trait. So the trait is a definition of like what you can do with a um, this a thing of this type. Uh, and once we've got that that where clause saying uh, some stuff about t, that means we can then use these things which we know are of type t. Um, inside the definition of this generic function. So, um, yeah, the general problem we were doing was like, how can I write an add function that's not like where I have to do it differently for every single um, uh, type? Now, like at some point you do need to define how do you actually do this operation? And that's what happens inside my add. And we had this, uh, we were implementing, let's see if we can find an implementation of my add. Yeah, so here's where we're implementing my add for a particular type, and we say, how do I add up to U32s? Uh, and in this case, it's kind of trivial, we just use the plus. But you could imagine uh, something that's not completely trivial being in here, like saying, how do I do this thing for U32s? That gets defined inside the implementations of my add, uh, and every type that you want to call our generic function on, this add values function, you can only use a T if it implements my add, so if it has code like what we just looked at for I32. Okay, so that's what we were doing. We we're writing this add function where we've said this function is generic over uh, the types, uh, over this type T. Um, uh, and that means that the code inside this function is valid for any T, so long as that T fits in with this um, constraint that we've provided. Okay, so that's all fine. But uh, what's like, that's not a complete picture of how we might want to do this. So um, here are some limitations. First of all, what if we wanted to add up two values of different types? So the code we've written at the moment, this um, add values function uh, can add up two U32s or two I32s so long as we do, we implement that my add function for them. Um, but what if we wanted to add an I32 to a, a U32 or something like that? Um, and also what if the result of that operation is a different type? Um, which could happen, especially in the general case, but even in the adding up case, it might happen because you might want to say the return value is like a bigger number um, because when you add up two very big U32s, you might end up with something that's too big to be a U32. So you might need a U64 as your return value. Okay, so those are things you might need to do with my ad that we currently can't do. But what we can do is we can actually make the trait itself generic. So up to, up until now, we've made the function generic. So we said the function can take a type parameter to say what types it's operating on. Um, but now we're saying the trait, as in the thing that defines what those types can do, can itself be generic. So it can have um, a type parameter. So that's how here's how we would do this. So we're saying this time we this time we're using the letter O, which is slightly confusing. This is not a zero. This is an O. Uh, which stands for other here, I guess. Um, and we're saying, so when we defined our trait before, we just said there was a my add function. We didn't have this, this type parameter. Now we've got this type parameter O saying, when you, when you talk about my add, you need to say what type, um, the other type is in order to, um, explain what my add means. So it's a constraint on some other type. My add is a constraint on some types. It's like a thing. A type either complies with my ad or doesn't comply with my ad. But now, when you're talking about my ad, you need to say adding to what, not just uh, you can add these, but you can add them to what. Um, so um, the definition of my ad is that you can add a, a self to an other where the other has this type O. So for example, we can implement my ad uh, to say I can add so we're implementing it for U32, 
So this type of self is U32, but we can say, look, you can add a U32 to U16. And when you do that, you take in yourself, which is a U32, and other, which is a U16, because this this O type here, uh, from up here, this O is here, a U16. So the function type, this O here is U16, in this example, and then the return type is self, because it says so, so self is U32. So that now we've got a U, U32 here, a U16 here. We want to add them up. The way we can do that is just to say, um, regard this U16 as a U32, which is allowed uh, in Rust, because kind of trivially you can see that if you've got space for it to fit a U16, you can fit a U32 as well. Dereference them both, because they're both references. And at, so that's what the star means. Um, so now we've got, look, we had a reference to a U32 and a reference to a U16, which we're treating as a U32. Sorry. Well, we've got a reference to U32. We dereference it. Now we've got a U32. We've got a reference to U16. We dereference it. Now we've got a U16. Then we treat it as a U32. Then we add them up. We've got a U32. Okay. Probably overlabored that, but uh, that's how you implement um, something uh, like a, a trait which has generic parameters. Um, yeah. So anytime you mention my ad, you're going to need to say what the O type is, what the other thing is. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, so that was what type are you adding to? What's the other? But you might also want to say what the type, the return type is, as we mentioned earlier. So we, in this, uh, we've changed my add again. So my add still takes just one type parameter, but it also has this associated type called output. So, um, you need to bear in mind that we could have written O for other, or we could have written other instead of O, comma, output. And we would have had two things, two types in the uh, generic generic type definition at the top. The output is a bit like O, but it's a bit different. And we'll talk, in a second, we'll talk about exactly how. But essentially what we're saying is this trait has two types associated with it. You've got the generic type parameter O, and you've got this associated type output, which we've written inside the trait with type before it. Um, and so as far as this definition is concerned, they, they work the same way, right? We've got a myAd function, which takes in a self as always, uh, takes in an, an, a type, another which of, of type O, but now instead of returning a self like it did before, it returns self colon colon output, which is basically saying referring to whatever you've said output is. So how does that work in practice? This is how we define the trait, and here's how we implement the trait for... Um, for U32 being added to a U16. And what we're saying is, when you add a U32 to a U16, the output is going to be a U64. So we, we then define our my add saying, wait, right, you know, other is U16. Uh, we can just refer to output here. Um, and then the, uh, the definition of the function is pretty straightforward. We just treat both of them as U64s and then add them up using the normal add operator. Excuse me. Um, and, and we can do something very similar to say, when I add a U32 to a U32, the output is a U32 in this case. Interestingly, I would have expected it that maybe you wanted the output here to be a U64 and here to be a U32. Maybe. Well, in both cases, either case. I guess this is just an example. So you might want it to be U32, uh, adding up two U32s give you a, gives you a U32. Uh, and that's what we've done here. Um, so that might overflow. Okay, so um, you, you you may well have questions about what's the difference between O and output. Why do they start with the same letter? Okay, so um, we'll get to that in a second. First of all, let's look at how the actual standard library add trait does this. So that we were we were writing something called my add, um, but um, the standard library has one of these called add. And it's actually very similar to what we were doing with one addition. So it has this, uh, this thing we were calling O, which it calls right hand side, which is probably a better name. Although it's a very, it's a very idiomatic English phrase though, isn't it? But anyway, the other thing is RHS and, uh, output is defined exactly how we had it on the previous slide. And instead of a function called, what was it called? My add is just called add and it returns output just like it and it takes in right hand side um, as the other argument so 
that's all exactly as we had it, but there is one addition, which is that um, you can provide a default for types. So uh, like I said before, when you mention my ad, you need to say, what are you adding to? And what this little bit here, equals self, does is it says, if you don't mention it, we'll provide a default. Uh, and that can be very convenient. Um, so now you don't when you mention add, you don't have to say um, what right hand side is because it, it will default to self. So um, that's going to be if I'm if if I'm adding to a U32, then the right hand side is going to default to being a U32. But you could also make it be something else if you wanted to. So now we've got a kind of very general trait which allows us to describe um, what am I adding to and what is the um, output type you know what what's the resulting type by adding those two things uh, and then here's how we would implement add so this is again this is the standard library add trait how would we implement it for some struct we were writing called big number uh, and then like the definition of big number probably wouldn't be just a u64 because a u64 is already a fairly big number it would probably be something cleverer but let's not think about that for now um, imagine big number has some complex implementation maybe a vec of u64 or something like that but uh, yeah so how do we implement add for big number um, well it, it, we can say a, it, implement add for big number notice that we didn't provide a right hand side here so right hand side defaulted um, and we did set up output to be self so self is big number and then we, we are implementing this add function for that. So the right hand side is self and at the out, the return value is return type is output as in it's a reference to this, which is a reference to this, which is a big number. Um, so that's why we're creating a big number here because the, the, this output is a big number. And then we just add up the two. And that's, um, so that's, our, that's how we've implemented. We've chosen to implement for big number. If you're adding up a big number to a big number, then we get the U64 out of each of them and then add them up with plus, and then make a big number from the result. And this is how you would call that thing. You'd say, uh, create a big number, and then you would call dot add on it, because this is this add method exists on it, because add is implemented for big number. And then we would create another big number and pass it in. And the question you, uh, for you is, what is the type of res? And how, how would you know that? What do you think? Well, res is... Res is of the type, the return, res is the return value from add. Add returns output. Output is self. Self is big number. So the type of res is big number. Now, I think the other part that also needs explaining is why didn't we have to say add brackets big number here, or the no, diagonal brackets big number here? Um, because add does have a, a, a generic type parameter. The reason why is because that default thing where it said RHS equals self. So actually, if we do, if we just say impl add for big number, we're actually saying impl add diagonal bracket big number for big number. So we're saying this um, right hand side here is also going to be a big number. So if we'd said add brackets diagonal brackets u32, then this self, it, this wouldn't be self here, this would be u32 here because we're talking about how do I add a big number to a u32. Okay, uh, so next bit. Um, again, we've got this big number. Um, but let's say we're implementing add, and by the way, we've just we haven't done an import here, so we're like using the fully specified name, but it's exactly the same thing. We're implementing add, but this time we're adding to a U32, and we're implementing that for big number. And we've also decided that the output type for this is going to be a U128. So how that translates is that this self output here is a U128. Um, and we're adding to a U32. So there's a bug in this slide because this right hand side should be U32. So we're implementing the add function. We're adding a self, which is of type big number, to a U32. So this is wrong. And the output is going to be this. So then in order to implement that, we just treat both the things. Self.0, which is a U64. Treat that as a U128. And right hand side, which is a U32. Um, treat that as a U, uh, U128. Add them up, and you get out. You get out a U128. So I've given you the answer. So here's how we would use this um, code. We'd create a big number, and we'd we'd say plus, and that the, the compiler knows to call 
add because uh, we've implemented add u32. Um, we've, we're adding it to the number three as a u32. That's what this means, in case you've forgotten that kind of literal syntax. That's the way we write a three, which we know is a u32. What's the type of res? I kind of told you the answer. The type of res is whatever this return value from add is, which is a u128. Okay, so that's how like the real um, add function in um, the standard library, sorry, add trait in the standard library works. And there's com some compiler magic happening here to say when you say plus, that I know that you should call this add function in the add trait. Okay. All right, so um, I said we'd get back to the difference between um, a type parameter and associated type. So here we are. So um, uh, type parameters uh, are for situations where you might want to implement the trait for both of them, right? You might want to say impl add of u32 for u32 and also impl add of reference to u32 for u32. Um, or you might want to add a u32 to a big number, but also a big number to a big number. Or, uh, and a u64 to a big number. And, you know, there might, there's all kinds of, you might want to implement multiple times add for the same type here. So in that case, where you might want to do it multiple times, use a type parameter, as in something between the diagonal brackets here. Whereas, if there should only be one, of, of one implementation for u32 with these with the whatever, whatever type parameters there are then we should use an associated type which is this thing that says type output equal blah so I, it took me a long time to get my head around this and I sometimes still get confused but essentially um, yeah what I just said is the way to think about it if a u32 could add to a u64 or a u32 or a u128 or whatever then it's going to be a type parameter. Whereas if we know for sure, given that these two up here are both U32, the output is going to be a U32, or we might, we might change our mind and say it's something different, but there's only going to be one answer, then use an associated type, as in this type output equal blah. That's the way to think about it. It does make sense. It, uh, in practice, it can be quite difficult at, at first to decide what you should do for your particular thing. Um, and don't worry about it. Try it out, and then if you realize you did the wrong one, do the other one. Um, okay, so that's type parameters versus associated types. Uh, all right, so on to just a couple of other little bits that are uh, related to traits just to finish off our discussion of traits. So first of all, um, there's some other like real magic that, that you can use. So clone is a trait. So if we if we say our, our, this, our, this struct we've made called dolly has the clone implements the clone trait, we could do impl clone for dolly, and that would mean that we could call the clone method, right? So that would be um, like unsurprising from everything we've learned so far. Trait um, uh, there's a trait called clone. It it says that you have a clone method, and it returns self. So um, it's like expresses the ability to like make a copy of yourself. What's surprising here is that actually there's some magic going on, which is that if you say derive clone um, on this struct, it will magically implement clone for you and you don't have to do the work. Now, how does it do that? Basically, this derive is a macro that is really clever. It will examine your struct dolly and figure out how to make a copy of it. It doesn't work for everything. Um, only You can only do it if everything inside you is clonable. Um, but yeah, derive is is super clever, and it will essentially generate that kind of impl clone for Dolly code that you would otherwise have had to write yourself. There's a few different um, standard library traits that have these uh, that, that will, can do this derive um, thing, and you can do it yourself. You can you can make your own traits which can be derived. The rule, by the way, for um, deriving, if you're writing your own, is you should only provide that derive thing if it's like super obvious what clone should do or what what your t your trait should do uh, if there's any kind of doubt about how to implement your thing don't implement a derive um, because so in, in the case of clone it's really straightforward right if everything inside dolly is clonable 
then clone each thing and make a new dolly out of all the things you cloned, right? Um, so it, it kind of fits the definition of this is super obvious what clone, what derived clone means. You should only implement, you should only pr make derived clone work by implementing the, so I think there's a derived trait, or I don't know, um, by implementing that thing if it's obvious what derived clone means or derived my trait means. Okay, so let's just go through the code that uses it. So we make a dolly, um, and then we call clone on it, and we got our, another thing called second dolly, which is the result of calling clone. And they, these two things are completely independent objects, um, but they have equal values inside them. And that's because when you derive clone, it implements that um, that clone that I just described, which is like the obvious way you would implement clone, given you understand what clone means, by the way. Uh, and in this, in Rust, and as in other some other languages, clone means uh, make me an independent copy. Um, it usually means make me an independent copy um, that is equal to the previous thing. The reason I say usually is because there are some types like arc uh, where or RC where where clone actually means. Um, make me another thing that refers to the same underlying thing. But that's kind of a special special case of clone, which we're going to talk about. Um, okay, one other thing, random thing we need to say about traits before we kind of got to the end of uh, this bit of talking about traits. Um, so uh, when you are implementing a trait, so when you're thinking impl blah for blah, so like impl uh, my add for big number, or impl add for... U32 or whatever it was, um, or add brackets my thing for U32 or something like that. Um, there must be at most one implementation of a trait for any type. So um, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to implement it. You're not allowed to implement the same trait again, right? So like you can have, you can do it again with different generic, uh, different type parameters, but you can't do the same thing again. But also. You're not allowed to do this for two things you don't own, right? So you can impl my trait for someone else's struct, or you can impl someone else's trait for my struct, but you can't implement someone else's trait for someone else's struct. Um, so where someone else means in a different crate from this one. And the reason for that it goes back to the first rule we said, that there must be at most one implementation for any trait. Because what if two different crates decided, I'm going to implement um, like this third-party trait for this third-party struct, but then some other crate could also decide to do that. And then suddenly, if you use those two crates together in your code, now you've got more than one implementation. And the compiler, the reason why you're not allowed more than one implementation is because the compiler just wouldn't know which one to use, um, so it wouldn't make any sense. So the rule that's used, which can get slightly annoying, is you're not allowed to implement someone else's trait for someone else's struct. Uh, you have to implement your own trait for someone else's struct or someone else's trait for your struct. Now, you can work around this. If this is causing you pain, you can work around it by making a very simple struct which just wraps someone else's struct or enum or very simple enum that wraps someone else's enum or something like that. Um, normally, it would just be a very um, transparent struct with just one thing in it which wraps someone else's struct. Now that you've got now you've got your struct, so you can implement someone else's trait for your struct, um, and it works. Um, so you can you can generally work around it if you need to um, to add the functionality that you need. I'm trying to think whether you can also do that the other way around by making your own trait. You might also be able to work. I can't think about that right now, but um, I think you could probably work around it by making your own trait, which is just like um, extend someone else's trait. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's generally work aroundable, but the rule is um, if you've got someone else's trait and someone else's struct, you can't implement that trait for that struct. You need to have your own trait or your own struct or both. Okay, so that was just a random thing about traits, uh, which you need to know. So summarizing the stuff we've learned about traits. Traits basically describe what you can do with an instance of that trait. Uh, and then you can say this type this type implements this trait, in, and you describe how that works. And then generics allow writing code that doesn't work with uh, 
like specific types like U32, but instead with something where all you know is it implements this trait and you don't actually know what type it is. Uh, and also traits themselves can take type parameters um, and associated types to say, um, to basically allow traits to be more flexible. So you don't have to write over and over the same thing um, for lots of traits that are all really similar. You can just say, um, here's how to add to AT instead of here's how to add to U32, here's how to add to U64, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that was traits and generic codes that uses traits to describe what those generic types do. Hope you enjoyed. Any questions, anything like that, please drop comments in the um, underneath. Uh, ping me on Mastodon. Uh, hit me up in my matrix room, hash Andy Balaam, colon, matrix .org. Uh, very happy to discuss stuff in there. Um, no questions are too dumb. Um, and see you next time.